Hey guys, and welcome to the video in another segment of Hacking Modding News and Info. Today is Monday, the 15th of June, 2020. A lot has happened over the past week, so I'm going to have to break this segment up again into two parts. Today we will cover the Sony systems, PS3, 4, and the PS Vita, as well as some stuff from the world of emulation and a couple of miscellaneous mentions like an update to Uncover, which is the jailbreak for iOS. Tomorrow we will take Take care of the switch and other nintendo systems for those who are new to these segments you could look down in the description for a brief summary on what they are all about and don't forget guys that the top 10 most pirated movies of the week will be their own segment and i will probably release that either later on in the evening or tonight lots to cover guys let's go ahead and jump into it and get started all right, guys, so first we're going to head on over to the PS3 scene where the only thing we will be covering is an update to the Apollo save tool. Now on version 1.1.0, this latest update really adds only one thing, but it's useful. Now you have the ability to export the content licenses to wrap files. This means that whatever like PSN games you have or DLC or anything like that that requires licenses, this will allow you to grab those licenses licenses and then store them somewhere like on your internal drive possibly the usb i haven't used this feature yet but we will cover it because i'm doing a tutorial soon on the apollo save tool so we'll cover it then but yeah this is very useful because you can gather up all of your licenses for your games and dlc and all that stuff export them either to your internal or usb and then you'll have them all in just one place without having to go through any trouble whatsoever and now we head on over to the PS4 scene where we have a couple things to cover, including this, an update to this homebrew game called Resident Evil Code PS4. It's now on version 0.6. There's been some improvements that have been done. You get to pick, for example, uh, Leon as a character now. There's been improvements to the various levels. They've also added a few more things here and there. You get various weapons and whatnot. Now, this is a side-scrolling shooter in case you haven't been able to tell it does look like it's almost like a streets of rage type beat em up game but it isn't it's a shooter it looks pretty interesting though if you have a ps4 on 505 i will put a link down in the description for you to download the package file and then it installs like any other type of package file into your modded system Next for the PS4, we have an update to PS4 Explorer. It's now on version 1.20. This is just a small update. As a matter of fact, here in the change log, it just lists some minor bug fixes. When you come here, there's a tutorial there on how to backup and install F package games using PS4 Explorer. This is basically a file manager for your PS4 that's on 5.05. You can also install or create custom themes and a custom avatar for the homebrew itself. All the information you need regarding the avatars and all that stuff is here on this page. And at the very top, you will see the rare file, which you download to get the Explorer homebrew itself. Now we move on over to the Vita scene and we head here to the popular Vita DB site that is home to just a mind numbingly amount of homebrews. And over the past week, a few things have been updated, starting with Terra Fried, which is a multi platformer endless mini game. I'm guessing it has something to do with an egg because it has the little egg avatar there and it's called Terra Fried, which is just an ingenious name. Then you have an update to PS4 Link Controls GUI, which is a GUI for the PS4 Link Controls plugin. Then you have an update to LCD color saturation. This allows you to enhance the color saturation of your modded Vita. And lastly, we have an update to easy vpk and this one here is special because it's directly connected to this whole entire vita db site so when you install it you can actually download any of the homebrews that are here directly to your vita and as you can see they are plentiful absolutely a useful must-have tool you have a modded vita 
And now we head on over to the world of emulation. Our first stop is a big update to MGBA. Now this emulator allows you to play ROMs from various Game Boy systems like Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, regular Game Boy and whatnot, and you can do it on various platforms. Not just that, but the emulator itself is a really good, solid, stable emulator that plays those ROMs very, very well. And you can use it on, again, multiple platforms. You can see here that this update 0.8.2 is quite extensive. A lot of things here have been fixed to emulation. Some other general fixes and improvements have been done. You can check out some of the miscellaneous things they did as well in this update. When you head on over to the downloads, you can see here the various operating systems you can use this on, such as Windows, Mac OS, and Ubuntu, as well as the various different platforms such as the 3DS, the Switch, the Wii, and the PlayStation Vita. Keep in mind, of course, that those systems will have to be modded in order for you to take advantage of MGBA. And next, we have an update to CMU, which is the Wii U emulator for your PC. We've covered this a ton of times before. It is hands down the best Wii U emulator that is out there. Of course, it's again, only for Windows. This latest version is 1.19.2C. You can grab the Windows download here from the download section. If we go over to the change log and click on the latest details, you can also see what has been done in this version. And it's usually quite extensive here. This one seems to be focused a little bit more on OpenGL and Vulkan, which is a huge plus because that just makes those games look and perform better, especially those first party ones. Make sure if you are a Wii U fan and you have a PC, if you haven't tried this out yet, absolutely get it. It is a must have. And next we have an update to Ryu Jinx emulator, which is a Switch emulator, believe it or not, that can be used on PC, on Linux, and OBS. Now, before you start salivating from excitement, this is still relatively new. It's a work in progress, and I really wouldn't say that it's in a state where the games are playable just yet. Now, in this latest update, they actually demo Mario Kart 8 Deluxe here, so you can kind of see the improvements they made. I've also watched some other videos like this one with Animal Crossing New Horizons. The games look good. There's only minor glitching here and there, but the, um, the emulator seems to do very well with rendering the graphics for the most part. There doesn't seem to be any issue with um, rendering, you know, stuff that's off in the distance. The issue mainly seems to be revolved around dropped frame rates and the frame rate just being ecstatic. Here, this person has the FPS counter and there are times where it hits 60 and 61 here in the menu, but during gameplay, it literally jumps all over the place from the single digits to like the mid and high 40s, back down to the teens and 20s. It's just all over, and that's what the main problem is. If they can get that sorted, this would definitely be a killer emulator for sure, because the rest of it seems to look fine. Again, there's minor glitching here and there, but it looks good for the most part. You can see the graphics there. The dropped frame rates seems to be what is the major issue. So hopefully they can get that ironed out at some point, and then we'll have a great emulator because everything else looks pretty damn good. All right, now we're going to head on over to a couple of miscellaneous mentions, starting with an update to Uncover. This is the jailbreaking tool that you use with iOS versions 11.0 through 13.5. This update puts the tool now at 5.2.0. When you come here, you have your drop down window so you can pick your device on this side and then pick the specific model or whatever from the right side drop down menu and then click on download. Make sure you check out the installation guide. It has all the information here that you need for iOS, Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. And there is just a wealth of information here. So if you've never been to the site before, make sure you take time to read and go over everything. And then when you scroll down a little bit here, you can see what's new in this particular version. Uh, here, for example, they've enabled iOS 13 
13.5.5 beta 1 support, and they've done a couple of bug fixes. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. I thought I had another miscellaneous mention to cover, but it turned out it was something totally different than from what I thought it was. Definitely not worth mentioning. You know I appreciate you guys watching, and if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know the best way to do that is just to hit that like button and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to look out later today for the top 10 most pirated movies. That will be its own video, and then tomorrow we will continue part 2 with Nintendo systems. There's a lot to cover, especially for the Switch. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.